Okay, do not bring it home. You only bring back your pencil cases. Alright, and help me keep the manipulatives, the fraction list, please. Thank you. sit down to the student chair first, uh, please come back to your seating first. And then in your neighbor, like two roads, and together to discuss, share your observation, because you are, today, you are looking at different student, right, probably. And then report each other if you see any change of student thinking, okay? And then um, I want to ask, uh, you know, each group to report to others, and then what kind of change you observed? Or, uh, you know, if you observe it, what, what, what is the moment? And, uh, you know, what trigger the student change? And if you don't, why not? 
So please discuss and then report to the. So this group, right? So the, these two, and then you end. So one, two, three, and then four, and five. You are a little bit smaller. Six, and then seven, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That kind of group. So, um, yeah, but uh, while, you know, d during break, please feel free to look at your student work, of course, and then have some yeah, snacks. Okay. So, then come back uh, at 4 o'clock. Thank you very much. Yeah, the toilet uh, at level 5 is, uh, they're doing some, some repairs, I think, some water and things. So, uh, to use the level 4 toilet, it's, a, it's the same area, but just one level. Um, for the refresh. Okay, so he, he's coming. <laughs> so, maybe you can start sharing, okay, in your group. So, what you observed. So if you witness the student conceptual change. Okay, let's see. Uh, Mr. Chen, and please share your reflection first. Okay, so the... Hi, all, all back, right? All right, cool. Um, so we we stayed back um, after you guys left to have uh, had some uh, discussions on uh, how we can improve this lesson. Uh, we had a lot of valuable feedback from all of you here and some of your previous colleagues who were attending yesterday. Uh, but we couldn't quite fit in everything, <laughs> yeah, because there were many suggestions. So we, we tried our best to fit in whatever suggestions that you guys gave, and uh, of course what uh, Professor Akiko gave as well, and the other professors. So um, and we worked in the morning, this this very morning, uh, throughout the morning and the afternoon before you guys came. We we took the lesson plan and we thought through some of the suggestions and how we can you know implement it. Uh, and I hope it was a better lesson uh, as compared to yesterday. Uh, yeah, I see people nodding their head. <laughs> okay, that, that's a good sign. Uh, another reason being was uh, these, these pupils are my pupils, as in I, I teach them. So you can see the, the, the difference in response and everything. Yesterday they were pretty muted, right? but today they are more uh, responsive. Uh, so I hope that's a good start. And uh, yeah, we, we changed the introduction as well, as you can see, as it was my birthday. But it's not my birthday, but yeah, you can still give me presents, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. so we thought that would liven up the mood. <coughs> there was actually a suggestion from uh, Jessie, it was her, her idea. So we brought that in and uh, we tried to make it a very uh, student-centered kind of thing. That means I was trying to elicit responses from the students 90% uh, of the time. Right, only when they had uh, difficulties uh, explaining, you know, then I tried to you know pull them into the the key terms that we that we wanted them to to learn. So um, so you saw there were many pupils who came up to to present to to explain, and they were very shy because uh, generally they, they they don't usually get to do that much in in, in class. Yeah, because we do a lot of frontal frontal teaching. So I think this is a very uh, good opportunity for for us for our school to to try out this this approach. And hopefully we all benefit from from this uh, from this exercise. Yeah, right. Thank you. Okay. So, okay. Uh, 
from, from team. Okay. Um, basically, you know, like what um, Noah shared yesterday, uh, whatever that we observe, the children are not um, grasping it. So <clears throat> we realized that they couldn't really use the manipulatives. So today we were like trying to crack our brains, you know. This morning we were reenacting after the lesson plan was out, we were like trying to pretend that we are the pupils there, trying to figure out what would they do. Because um, then we realized that hey, maybe there are, there are, there are still gaps there because we couldn't figure out, you know, we were, we were talking about the fraction strips, the bar, and things, 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 things like that. We couldn't really um, get it all in in time because we don't have the resources, basically. So we just had to make do with what we have and try to close the gaps wherever possible. So that's why with the little short time, short time that we had this morning, from 8 to 12, we were like trying to reignite the whole scene in our mind again and again with Noel um, playing it, you know. So hopefully it turned out to be better. And um, like what he said, <coughs> because the pupils are different as well, they are not different ability. Some of them can ask me, are they better? No, they are not. They are actually the same ability. It's just that they are from different classes and maybe the rapport that um, Noel has with them and um, compared to the group yesterday was different. So basically they are of the same ability. That's all I want to clarify. Thanks. Yeah, I'd like to thank the teacher um, yesterday who came to me. Thank you because um, she came to me and then she gave me the suggestion that to, uh, because the pupils are not really using the manipulatives. So from her suggestion, we uh, did not give them the first worksheet as compared to yesterday. So we just flash the questions and then the pupils will just use the manipulatives and do it. Thank you. Okay, to follow up on what Clara has said, uh, indeed it's true at the beginning of the lesson when we did not provide the worksheets, we realized that the pupils were forced to use the manipulatives. Okay, and then we saw how they actually tried to make use of that to solve the question. But the moment we gave out the worksheets, many of the pupils immediately, they, you know, started using the procedural approach, you know, to solve the question instead of using the manipulatives. So as a result of that, um, um, kind of um, tells me that it is important that we go through the CPA approach because the moment the children start using algorithm and the moment they use procedural approach, many of them uh, would not want to go back to the manipulatives because one of the groups over here, uh, the girls actually mentioned it's very troublesome you know, to use the manipulatives. So it'd be good for us to start off you know, with the concrete materials so that children can acquire deep conceptual understanding of the topic before we teach them um, the procedural, as in the algorithm, as to how to solve the questions. Thank you. Okay, so um, based on this information, additional information, and your observation, and also read from your lesson plan, and please you know, uh, go back to your discussion, small group discussion, and then talk about if you, know, you see any that student change in the concept or like understanding and if, if you you know to please share this and then discuss and then report to the entire group okay so do you think 10 minutes is enough yes please You can speak louder. Don't don't whisper in the
So, team, please come back. Here. So this is kind of odd, you know. We have a very long distance, but <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe uh, after you report it, you know, some of you can come to front. Okay, so that we could be much more closer. Okay, so the the first group over there, please report. You can someone come to and then use the microphone so that you know you could capture in a video. Well, maybe I can give you this mic. Um, okay, afternoon. Um, just a few suggestions. Um, first thing is the CPA approach. Our group was thinking um, if the students, uh, sorry if I'm not using the right mathematical terms here uh, because I'm not a maths teacher. <laughs> okay, I, I qualify my statement here. Uh, disclaimer. Um, okay, the CPA approach. Uh, we were just wondering, it looks like the students are able to solve the problem getting the right answer, maybe in the uh, maybe they might have done some calculation mistake here and there. Uh, for the child that I was observing, she did a calculation mistake, but generally I could see that she understand uh, what is, what is the first one? Three, uh, three quarter plus half. She can understand when it is uh, added together, there is a whole and then there is a quarter. She could understand that and she could uh, show us that as well. So she was okay with that. But um, that is the concrete part, I suppose. Then, But she was able to write it down. But at the end, when you introduced the worksheet too, she was a bit confused. Not only a bit, she was very confused. Because she did not know, especially question two, when she arrived at 20 over 10, she did not know how to uh, interpret it as two whole and she went to do the long division, and she got, got an answer too, but after that, she doesn't know what to do after that. So she was very, very confused. And she tried to use a manipulative, and instead of taking um, 10 parts, she went on to take 12 parts. So it goes to show that maybe, perhaps, she still have not grasped the concept of uh, the parts, and therefore, she couldn't relate that. So that was one of the things we were thinking, that's one. Uh, for the CPA, we were thinking if they can write the mathematical statement and they can get the calculation right, why do we go backwards to C? Because CPA, if I could, uh, if I understand correctly, it should be um, to show them the concrete, then move on with pictorial, then you move on with something abstract so that they will understand the abstract better, right? But now you are going backwards, so I was like wondering if they already reached there, really why bring them backwards? So that could have. Um, that could be the reason why some of the students were, ah, yeah, it's so troublesome to use this, you know. So uh, that was our view. Is there anything I All right, uh, for worksheet one, where the children have to, okay, uh, the answer is uh, when you add three, three quarter plus seven eight, the answer is ten out of twelve. And then how do you think she got this answer? Okay, when we went round, we realized that the children are very confused. Okay, and I don't think many children actually give that as the answer. So maybe what you should be doing instead, you should be, uh, actually make use of their wrong answer instead. And then after that, get them to go to the front and tell you why they are giving you this answer. Instead of uh, like, you know, you give them uh, 3 quarter plus 7, 8 is, is equals to 10 out of 12. You know, some of them like, you know, eh, they just don't get it. Why is teacher like making me doing all this when they don't have that kind of misconception? So I thought the misconception should come from the children, 
not from the teachers. Okay. And uh, another thing also I would like to comment is that the use of the fractional, uh, the name of the fraction. You know, uh, I realize the children like to use one by two, one by four. I thought the children should be taught to use the proper fraction name like half, quarter, thirds. Uh, yeah, you did uh, explain to them, okay, uh, this is called quarter. Maybe the emphasis should be more on the use of the correct term for fraction. Thank you very much. Well, next, next group, could you pass this one to front or back? Thank you. Thank you, Connie. Um, I think for us, uh, we thought what was different from the two groups yesterday, comparing yesterday and today, we thought this group, they were more confident in using the manipulatives. Um, and we noticed that maybe for the pair that I was observing, I realized that um, one girl, she actually took out the manipulative first before she wrote anything. She tried out, figured it out before she wrote down. So that was very encouraging. That means actually that's a very good use and the proper use of manipulative. Okay, so I think you've established a concrete bit. Yeah, of course, what was different again? Yesterday's group, they did pictorial representation. This group, none. They all use the manipulative and then they wrote down. However, we also sense that most of the children, they had the procedural worked out already. Then with that, they just represented using the manipulatives. Perhaps because we were around. <laughs> They wanted to show us, yeah, that, that, that was one thing, and uh... Well, maybe, maybe we can come back if, you know, for the whole discussion. Yeah. Okay. okay, thank you. The thank you. next group. Hi, uh, I'm David from Huamin Primary. Uh, okay, I wasn't here the yesterday's um, yesterday's session, but from my colleagues who were here, they actually said that um, it was a very good lesson today compared to yesterday's lesson. So I, I will have to take their word for it. And then, uh, actually, I also want to say that um, I find that the use of the manipulative here is extremely useful uh, for this lesson, especially to show the pupils how to add and subtract. I mean, uh, add, sorry, uh, the fractions. And I also applaud the teacher for actually using the different representation um, when the children had different representations of the one whole and one quarter, right? Um, the teacher actually actually showed uh, the whole the rest of the class how they actually arrived also. So I thought that bit was very good. And uh, but however, I did observe that um, uh, that certain explanation needs to be further uh, delved into. Like for example, the denominators, the denominators, especially when the part where the three quarters plus seven out eight, when they added the denominators, the children didn't quite understand why it was a total of, uh, shouldn't be 12 and should have left as, as eight. So that part was one area that I was a little bit, uh, I was a little bit uh, not comfortable with. And also the other thing was that uh, when the, one of, I think Ambrish, right? Ambrish and Haida mentioned about this half times two, which is equals to two quarters which is actually also uh, conceptually wrong. Uh, because it's half times two is actually one. So there, there a bit, I mean, I'm not sure whether, maybe the focus of this lesson wasn't to rectify that, but so I, I shall not uh, talk more about this point. Uh, okay, so I think that's about it from our group, thanks. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, uh, our group actually uh, finds that that uh, the concept of making a hole uh, is not very evident. Uh, because, um, like for example, the boy, Irfan, he came out uh, when he was asked to solve the question. He placed, placed the manipulative separately. Instead of uh, coming in with all the pieces uh, and start to make a hole, they should be starting to make a hole when they solve the problem. When he came out and placed the thing and further teacher probing, then he start to, uh, okay, then I start to do this. But I think the good part is that uh, the teacher actually asks them to change the color. Uh, that, that, is, that is extremely uh, wonderful. And, and when they can see that they are all the, of the same part, the uh, same color, then it gives them more uh, so-called understanding of the problem. Yeah. Uh, 
And also, uh, we feel that the board uh, should be more organized in the sense uh, that, uh, you see, the equation was there, three quarter plus seven eight, right? So probably uh, when you compare the manipulative, probably you might want to shift your pieces to another side so that you can actually draw the focus of the students rather than uh, leaving uh, the manipulative below the equations. Because, uh, you know, the, the student will, will be looking up and down. What, what are we looking at, you know? So we try to contain their focus. Oh, yeah, that's about it. Yeah, thanks. Okay. Maybe, maybe I want to say something because I observed sure. the, the boy Ifan towards the end of uh, the exercise um, before we inter uh, the point where we interacted with them. Initially, I thought that the, he also couldn't get his concept uh, about this one whole thing. But towards the end, I think I saw him putting the 20 tens, right? So he formed two whole circles. But then he didn't, he didn't do anything. I think I, I realized that he doesn't understand it's one whole because he put 20 over 10. So I, I pointed to it and asked him, um, so these are the two you have. So what is this? I just pointed to one this and he says, this is one whole. Then I, I say, then what about this? Then he says, this is two whole. Then he, he, read, then he put out equals two, zero upon 10. Then after a while, he look at the this again and then he erased the zero upon 10. And then it becomes two. So I think towards the end, he finally realized this concept of a whole. So initially, I thought he didn't also. So I thought that was actually quite wonderful. All right. OK, sorry for taking over the mic. Anybody else? OK, back to from two groups. OK, uh, the girl in front, I think Yu Ru and uh, Jia. What's the name? Okay, Jia <laughs> Xing. Yeah. Okay, uh, so so both of them actually uh, uh, did this question one. Uh, they actually solved the question. He gave thirteen out of eight, but when they tried to solve this uh, so-called question by changing it into, into a mixed number, they actually wrote thirteen out of 8 divided by 8 is equal to 1 whole and 5 over 8. I think that this statement here, uh, I think is not really right. If you were to take 13 out of 8 divided by 8 again, you need to divide it into another 8 more parts for every single 8 that you that you uh, put in, you know. So I asked the girl, uh, were you taught to do this? She said, yes. I, th I think there might be a misconception because on the right hand side, he, she actually used the, the, the number 13 divided by 8 through a long division. So that is the, 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 the thing I think uh, is causing a little bit of confusion in terms of statement and presentation. Now. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So, so, so far, there are no reports for student conceptual change or deepen their understanding, but those two groups, they notice anything. Okay. I'd like to commend the team. Uh, I noticed a big difference as compared to yesterday. Huh? Uh, today, you start off with the manipulative and you end it off with the manipulative and you can see students really understand the concept of the whole. When they try to form 20 over 10, you can see many students forming trying to form a whole using the different sizes of uh, manipulative. For example, we have students forming 2, 0 over 10, or, or 1, 10 over 10. Then after a while, they, after you say manipulative, they will equip all this into 2. So it shows that they finally understand the idea of a whole. Uh, for the explanation part as well, the explanation question yesterday, when you have that worksheet too, ask them to explain what went wrong, Students couldn't even start at all. Today, immediately, I can see they start to use words to explain what went on wrong with the denominator, with the numerator. Quite a number of groups managed to, I see quite a number of students being able to explain using words, except maybe two groups, two of the uh, four students couldn't even start, even after 10 minutes, they couldn't even write anything. But 
say for those group, two group, the other group students are able to explain. So I thought that went well. Uh, but we noticed something weird. Yesterday, a lot of students uh, moved from the tutorial to the extract. They used the date, and then they answered the question, today, none at all. Most of them start off from the concrete and most move on to the abstract. They did not really draw any date at all. They model the modeling method. Not many use the modeling, model, modeling method. So I wonder what's, why is there this difference? Uh, yeah. Thank you very much. <clears throat> uh, okay, sorry, yeah. one more time. Okay, uh, just now I went around and I managed to observe about 14 of the children. And then out of these 14, actually 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 of them, they actually got it right, you know, at, for the last uh, worksheet, uh, except for two of them. But, okay, then out of these 12 who got it right, only four of them give the answer in simplest form. The rest tend to give the answer in improper fraction. So have they been taught how to change from improper fraction to mixed number? Okay, yes, Okay. well, thank you very much. Uh, please come to front so that we could have more closer discussion a little bit. And then meanwhile, um, the team is going to, if you want to say something, maybe prepare a little bit. And then when we, everybody come front, <laughs> you don't want to come front? <laughs> okay. If they come front, and then, you know, uh, we're going to have some, you know, um, Okay, well, we, we don't bite you, so please cross her. Yes, please. Okay. For a CPA approach, our understanding is that it's always good to start with C followed by P and then A. Um, C mean, meaning concrete with the use of manipulatives. In this case, we we're talking about fraction this while lesson. Uh, like we mentioned earlier on, even in yesterday's lesson, we realized that uh, many a times due to time constraints, teachers may just simply um, spend very little time using the manipulatives or some may not even give the children a chance to use the manipulatives in school. As a result of that, many children have been taught the procedural approach, and once they have learned that, many of them uh, will find that it's quite a chore to use the manipulatives. Um, this is the reason why, despite the fact that our children may be able to answer the questions, we realize that when we ask them to explain, they are unable to do so. And when we look at our P5 and 6 pupils, we realize that um, they have very inconsistent results um, for the fraction topic. And if you're going to read up on research papers and all that, uh, one of the reasons may be because they do not have deep conceptual understanding of the topic. Therefore, we decided that um, for yesterday and today's lesson, we will focus on the use of manipulatives. And our understanding of the CPA is that um, yes, we do proceed from the concrete to the pictorial and finally we bring in the abstract. However, at any point in time when we realize that the children do not understand the concept, it is alright to go back to the concrete. Because if they do not understand the topic, it means that they do not have the right concepts, then I think we should go back to concrete materials and then we address this issue and then we help them to understand the topic better. Okay, I'd like to address the gentleman. She, uh, he, he said, I, this girl Jia Xing, right? She, you said she did this 